The path in the navigation stack for SwiftUI is often underused because many developers are unaware of its full potential or find it intimidating to implement effectively. This video will demonstrate practical examples and clear step-by-step -step instructions to help you master this powerful feature. By seeing real-world use cases and breaking down the concepts into simple parts, you'll grasp how to incorporate Path seamlessly into your projects. Make sure to check out my SwiftUI summer sale. The link is in the description. Okay. We are going to take it even further with navigation. You know, if you take a look at the playlist, again, the link is in the description for that too. Uh, you will see that I talk a lot about navigation. And one thing that I asked really frequently is uh, the path, navigation path. So today we are going to cover uh, that. Its strengths, its weaknesses. So what I did is just started a brand new Excel project. Nothing, anything fancy. So what do we have to do to be able to access the navigation path? Well, uh, you want to add the navigation stack. So right over here, we are going to add navigation stack. Let's just start uh, typing that out. And usually you will see me use the one with only the root. And uh, that kind of covers many, many cases. But in some cases, you want to use the path. So we are going to talk about that today. So let's just use this one the path. And then we are going to have a binding of navigation path. Now, this could be a little bit tricky, but basically what uh, you want to do is just add at state private var path uh, uh, equals navigation path. And as you can see, it already starting to autocomplete, which is uh, really nice. So I'm just going to bind it. As you can see, it's a binding dollar sign path and then we have our root so this is how you are going to construct it but how does this actually work well in order to understand the real depth of it we are going to start off not using the path and just going with some other examples i'm going to get back over here but uh, we are going to uh, use it let me just remove all of this too and what you want to do well let's first of all let's create a v stack and uh, in that vStack, well, we are going to have some, uh, some things in those vStack. But in order to understand how navigation stack works, let's take a look at the, the navigation destination view modifier. And that should be added outside of any lazily loaded uh, views. Therefore, I'm just going to have a list over here. Lazy loaded views are basically lists and uh, lazy vStack, uh, all, all of the lazy uh, uh, stacks and grids. We are going to add this navigation destination. And as you can see, there are three of them. And uh, here we have is presented. I covered this quite a lot in the previous episode, so we're not going to talk about that. And then we have the item and then four. Let's take a look at this four because this is really relevant for the navigation path. So right over here, we have four. And then you have a hashable type, which means that you might add anything over here, uh, any type that is hashable. Let's start off with int dot self right over here. So, and uh, I'm going to select this uh, code completion and then hit return. And we are going to get back a hashable. So let's just call this a value, why not? And then we're going to take a look at the value in just a second. So what this does is that because we are inside the navigation stack, it is listening for int values as navigation destinations. And whenever an int value is set, we are going to get that value over here and it's just going to present the view, whatever we are going to add in here. So um, I'm not going to create a different view, but of course you should do it like some sort of a destination view or whatever. I'm just going to go and have a text and then just have, uh, I don't know, value and then string into operation value. There we go. So we're just going to present this simple text as a destination. So we're going to actually navigate to it in a navigation stack style. Okay, how do we trigger it? Well, we're going to trigger it with the navigation link. And uh, you already talked about navigation uh, link with the destination and label in the previous episodes. 
Now we are going to take a look at this one with the value and label or the title key and label. Let's just call this with value and label. It's much more flexible. So the value, as you can see, it's an optional hashable. Okay, that's fine. Let's just go for zero. That's an int and that's an optional hashable. So great. And then the label text and then let's just say navigate to zero whatever uh, you feel like it. Now, what this does is that because we are listening inside the navigation stack to int values, which are hashable, just to make sure that you nail that down and it's really obvious for you, we are listening for those in the navigation destination and whenever a navigation link is providing any of those int values or of those types of values of type int, we're going to navigate to this value. Okay, so uh, let's just select a simulator and let's run this. The Swift UI Summer Sale is almost done and it's the most complete bundle I ever offered. You'll get everything I've built for Swift UI, over 20 high quality digital products, plus a spot in my live Swift UI camp on Zoom, kicking off July the 1st. Combined, it's all valued at over $3,000, but during the sale, it's available for just $199. This is a rare opportunity to level up your Swift UI skills, whether you're just starting from scratch or refining your craft. But don't wait, spots are limited, and once they are gone, they are gone. If you're serious about growing as a Swift UI developer, now's the time. The link is down in the description. Here we go. Let's click on navigate. And here we have it. Value zero, the text from over here. And of course we can tap back and so forth. Now, what happens if I want to provide a string value? That is also hashable. So let me just copy this out and paste it in there. Instead of int, we're going to listen to string values, string. And then this value will be, uh, let's just call this value string so we can, you know, differentiate. And then we want to trigger a string. So right over here, again, I'm going to copy this out and paste it in there, navigate to, uh, I don't know, string, or let's just call this a value. Value and then value. Okay, let's build and run and see how that looks like. Most probably you kind of guessed it. We are going to navigate to zero, value equals zero, and then navigate to value, value string is a value. So this is how we pass along kind of uh, data through our navigation. But of course, we want this to be a little bit more flexible. I don't want to have int values, string values, all of that stuff. So that's where the navigation path comes in, which is really, really nice. Okay, so uh, let's just comment uh, these out so you have them for a reference. And let's put back our path. So just have a path and then dollar sign path. Okay, and now because we have this path of navigation path, all we have to do Think of this as an array, you know, a stack, basically. You want to append to that array uh, and you want to remove from that array. So let's just have a button. You don't even need a navigation link right over here. So just a button uh, with action and label and then the label text and no uh, navigate. And then right over here, we're going to say path, um, dot and there you have it append and all you have to append here is a value of hashable i'm just going to go with the zero int value again so now let's just comment out these or rather let's just go with the int value so let's just build and run and then we have navigate and it's just going to go to that value zero let's see what actually happens if i add another button and append now value and navigate to, I'm just going to go with navigate to, and also comment this out. Let's build and run and see. Of course, as you might expect it, we are going to go navigate value zero and then navigate to value string of value. Okay, this is really getting somewhere. 
uh, but there's even more that you can do. Remember that we have these int values and string values? Well, you could just create a simple destination enum which will have any of these. And then we can just uh, have a destination.self. Or you can just have an enum. Go ahead and take a look at uh, my previous uh, videos on how to uh, create a navigation with enums. Go ahead, check it out uh, on, on the uh, list on my YouTube uh, channel. So that's how you navigate. Now, how can we pop back? Well, as I told you, this is an array. So what we want to do is I'm going to go right over here. I just have a, a VStack. And then let's have a new button. And uh, let's have an action and label. And for the label text of dismiss. And what you want to do is just go path uh, dot remove last. And you could just go remove last, the last one or the last K. Let's just go for the last because yeah, currently we already know that uh, we have only one. So this is just going to go for the int values. So we just go dismiss and this is going to dismiss it. Now, I'm not going to build out a more complicated navigation path, but if you want to pop back all the way to the root, what you have to do is just say, not, uh, you can just go remove last and uh, the numbers of paths, but you can just say path equals navigation path. And that will just uh, uh, do it. Dismiss to root in this case. Let's build and run and see uh, that also in action. I just did building and running, navigate, dismiss to root, and it is going to navigate with one simple animation to the root of uh, your uh, navigation. So that is how easy it is to create navigation stacks with the navigation path. And uh, if you are interested in a more elaborate way of navigation, go ahead and check out my Swift UI summer sale where you can uh, have a navigation coordinator, which is bundled over here. And also Swift UI can, by the way. Again, take a look at the link in the description and I will see you on the other side.